Hey everyone, I'm back. It is part two of our election fraud hashtag Malkin live live stream special. Uh, those of you who are in Wisconsin, do what you need to do. All right, we had Vicki McKenna uh, on talking about this shady nonprofit, the Center for S Civic and Tech uh, Innovation uh, that's out there accepting grants, working with the city of Madison and probably other cities across the country uh, to gather voter registration and absentee ballots in public parks and specifically working with the Joe Biden campaign. That is blatantly illegal in the state of Wisconsin. And now we're gonna turn our focus. Unfortunately, I don't have a Minnesota hat, uh, but I'm going to bring in the great Minnesota GOP representative, Steve Draskowski. Hi, Steve. Hi, Michelle. Hey, I, I grew up in Wisconsin, so. Oh, did you? Good. Okay, well. Good. There's a red border around uh, this Wisconsin, and we're doing we're doing our best there. I was there in Waukesha County last week talking to Republican women, uh, and it is no coincidence that all of these outbreaks are happening, of course, in key battleground states. So I think the last time we communicated was last year after the state campaign finance board uh, came out with its ruling on Elon Omar, and it was a result of your complaint. Can you summarize that for us first, just to refresh our viewers? Yeah, I had actually two complaints. Uh, they, they focused on her spending. She spent money to uh, go to different cities in the U.S. with campaign funds. Um, and uh, part of the outcome of that was uh, that they recognized the fact uh, because they did a lot of uh, they did a lot of investigative uh, inquiry and um, and found that she actually uh, she actually uh, uh, filed taxes with uh, Ahmad Hersey, who is is not the person she was legally married to. She was legal legally married to her brother Ahmad Elmi at the time. And so, in both 2014 and 2015, uh, she was cited for that. She was cited for numerous violations. She was guilty of all of them and had to pay a bunch of money back, thousands of dollars. Right. And then, of course, after that happened last uh, last year, you raised the alarm on this to try and get a congressional investigation and uh, and, and to really raise the flag and, and get federal intervention on this as well, correct? Correct. Yeah. I, I uh, sent a letter to the Office of Congressional Ethics that uh, that brings forward and vets um, congressional um, uh, ethics requests like the one I had. And I still have not heard from them, Michelle. And uh, we continue to try to contact them. But that was uh, that was well over a year ago now, coming up in a year and a half. Yeah. And so yeah. here we have today, we're going to be talking about yet another item that we should add to that request to them. And uh, Minnesotans are really, I think, um, ready to to get them to act. And we're going to start leaning, I think, on our members of Congress here more. Yes, yes. And I just I really want people to understand how pivotal your role has been in flagging, whether it's uh, the tax related fraud, the campaign finance fraud, uh, the immigration fraud, of course, and now the election fraud as well. You just had a press conference. Uh, tell the viewers who are watching the live stream on Facebook, YouTube and Periscope what you announced. Yeah, so I so with my work over the last couple of years about pursuing this fraud, I don't like fraud, Michelle, and so when I see it, I, I like to go after it, and I did with Ilhan Omar in a wide variety of areas, as you mentioned it, um, and that um, that I think gained some notoriety, and um, people in Minneapolis contacted me, and and largely people in the Somali community, but others as well, uh, contacted me about what they understood to be patterns of voter fraud in 2018. And they were representing to me uh, that it was coordinated by Representative Omar and her campaign. Uh, and actually there were elements in 2016, I'm told as well. Uh, but they met with me, they asked to meet with me and I did, I met with them multiple times uh, and they um, impressed upon me enough details that uh, I, I mean, I was pretty skeptical to begin with, but they impressed upon me a lot of details and connected me with some other people that validated uh, what they were saying. And um, uh, so I proceeded forward. I, I talked to the FBI and shared with them 
because I had been in touch with the FBI on these other fraud charges, perjury and other things that you mentioned uh, in the in the year before that. And so I met with the FBI and shared with them what they uh, had shared with me. And that was that was spring in March, April. I didn't have to pull the date out, um, but met with them, shared that information. And I was not convinced that they were going to do an investigation and go in there. Um, and so um, I'm like, well, the only other organization that I can think of that uh, would do this and, and, and bring it to the surface is Project Veritas. And so I asked around, I got their number and, and talked to James O'Keefe and uh, he assigned someone to it. And he, that person came out and met with us, met with a group of individuals I have been talking to. We shared the same stuff in multiple meetings with that person. And uh, from there on out, there was a little bit of a gap in time until we got to the primary, which began in, in late June here in Minnesota. And um, we started seeing then in June already in the primary, because I was told, Steve, this is gonna happen again. We're already seeing them beginning and, and organizing for this. We're sure it's gonna happen again. And so when we got to that, that primary beginning, um, we, one of the first things I saw was a video that was uncovered of someone, uh, a, actually there were two videos, Michelle, one you might not be aware of, but there's another one. It might be in one of Project Veritas's segment two or segment three, I don't know. Um, but there was uh, uh, a candidate for office that was sharing their frustration with the Somali community about the corruption they were seeing and they wanted it cleaned up. And 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 they wanted this to be America and not uh, not something that was corrupt and they didn't want America to be corrupted and they don't want their community to be corrupted. Yeah. And so yeah. in response to that, Michelle, a few days later, there was another video that arrived and it was one of the opponents uh, of that individual uh, really kind of sticking out their chest and boasting. It was a guy kind of, you know. Uh, boasting about how good, yeah, how good their their campaign was, and how poor uh, the individual who shared this about um, about the integrity problem. Uh, so uh, that was a video you saw last night, and probably I think it'll play tonight on on TV as well. Uh, but it uh, it shows and, and characterizes. Well, we saw what it was. So I saw that. Uh, and I, I immediately then called up uh, Veritas and I said, you guys got to come here. They agreed to come. Uh, we, sh we, we, they, they, they were given the video as well um, and, um, and shared, actually they were shared both videos. I only really have the, the second one, the one we saw last night. Um, and then uh, they have uh, really been here in Minnesota since, um, uh, all the way up to uh, even this week, I think they're back again, uh, collecting data. Um, and so they have a great deal of information. Uh, I am told that it's the largest piece they've ever done and it's going to be multi nights. I don't know if it's going to be three or four nights or how long it's going to be, but it's going to be, it's going to be a lot more information. So, um, that was where it started. Um, I, I simply saw a need, brought people together, by the way, all along the way, I've been informing the FBI about the stuff that I became aware of, including the video from last night, that video, Michelle, I shared with them before the primary election with the FBI. Um, I've shared names of bad guys and gals and their phone numbers and photos that are incriminating and other things. And I'm and maybe, you know, with the FBI, you know, they're kind of hush hush about stuff, but I'm not convinced even to this day they're doing anything. But, you know, maybe maybe some way they are. Well, you're in Oops, uh, we can hear a little bit of echo there. I'm just going to turn it down if you can too. So you're, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. Your, your instinct was absolutely right to, uh, to, to, to be able to discern that there was essentially just a, uh, a an institutional lack of urgency <laughs> about this matter. And if it weren't for you turning to project Veritas, you know, God knows what could be happening you know, from now until election day. This is all part of the plan. They right. execute their plans. And so there were two things here. One was your initiative to reach out to Project Veritas and obviously their ability to uh, to capitalize on, on that for the good of the country. But the second thing here, and, and you alluded to it, which is really remarkable, which is the members of the Somali community themselves who 
who whistle blew. Mm-hmm. Right there, that's yeah. that's actually white pilling. That's actually encouraging. Yeah, they you know they they want they they want the same thing the non Somalis in this country want. They want to be able to raise their kids, run their businesses. By the way, many most of them want the cops. Uh, you know, and they want they want their communities to be safe. They want to follow the law. They want to live and be Americans. They love our country. Uh, but we've got some criminal elements like we do anywhere else, and they are taking advantage of elderly Somali people is what is being represented to me yeah, and yeah. Uh, and taking their votes from them. Uh, the, the video last night, 300 votes by one guy that he took largely from old people who are unable to speak or write English, um, who... So he took the votes away. He's voting 300 times a day and they're not voting at all. Yeah. That's yeah. what we have going yeah. on. So just so people understand this, the video that you've seen on Project Veritas that's gone viral despite all of the censoring and shadow banning of the Silicon Valley overlords, the source for that video is Steve Draskowski. There's people in comments that are saying, hey, you got to watch the Project Veritas video. So I just want to <laughs> make, make it clear to people, this is the guy, this is the source. Uh, and of course, you know, with the help of these brave Somali whistleblowers, I want to read from your press uh, press release of the press conference that you just had. Uh, you know, most of the people who are tuning in uh, were not able to access either of those things. And I want you to just go through these three things and just flesh them out. Um, the investigation that Project Veritas is doing, which is rooted, of course, in all of the information that you were able to gather from people in the community. Number one, a complex widespread ballot buying scheme exists with voters paid $100 to $200 a vote. Number two, a systematic absentee ballot harvesting organization disenfranchises voters. Number three, irregularities at polling locations allow illegal ballots to be counted. Yeah, well, the first one is really what um, what the individual shared with me, Michelle, from 2018, is that it was it was an organized effort in these large apartment buildings. There's in Cedar Riverside neighborhood. There's 4,500 people that live there, and so you know the Democrats know that that that's a huge number of people, and they want to maximize the the number of people that they uh, bring in to vote. As a matter of fact. Uh, some of the voter turnout levels in that neighborhood in the past elections have been 100% or more. And so, um, you know, now we know why. And so um, what was shared with me is in 2018, uh, they the, the campaigns, and it was, I mean, the assertions were that it was Ilhan Omar's campaign, um, had building captains in each of the buildings and then sub-captains on the floors and there was a very organized effort to get each and every person out to vote. And it was done by taking them into vans um, and transporting them to the polling place. When they got in the van, they would check them off on a checklist one at a time. There was a person in the van with a, with a checklist. They got there, um, they accompanied them into the polling place, which I don't know in Minnesota that it's legal to be uh, for an individual with a campaign to go into the polling place uh, with multiple people, but that was what was reported. Uh, they would bring them back into the van when they were done and they would get paid on the way back to their apartments. That's what was represented to me happened in 2018. Now it's been told uh, very uh, often that that again happened this election. And I suspect that uh, some of the future um, this episodes that Project Veritas is gonna come out with is gonna focus on this one of those three items you talked about from the press conference this morning. The other one is really, uh, the second one is, is focusing on uh, what uh, Liban Mohammed included in his, in his own uh, video that he did, his incriminating self video uh, that he did. He took that video, by the way, uh, the date on it is the 7th of July of this year. Um, and some of the left will say, well, uh, there was a there was a Minnesota Supreme Court decision that uh, allowed uh, people to have more than the statutory level of three ballots at one time, uh, and that actually took place. That that court decision was for the days of July 28th through Election Day, August 11th. This video and the 300 ballots this individual had was on July 7th. 
And not only him having more than three ballots is a problem, but as you can see, nearly all the ballots were uh, were uh, un, were open yet, uh, suggesting they were unmarked. And he actually said in the video that all 300 ballots were for his brother, uh, Jamal Osman. And uh, so that's that's what you have. Uh, Jamal Osman, it's, it's been represented to me, is um, is uh, affiliated with and aligned with Representative Omar's campaign, as was the young guy, Omar Fateh, who uh, beat uh, incumbent state Senator Jeff Hayden and just smoked him. And so, you know, when you've got fraud working for you uh, to this extent, uh, that's what you get. By the way, Norm Coleman lost, uh, lost Minnesota by 312 votes uh, when he lost to Al Franken if you'll remember yeah. that. Yeah. And we yeah. have Obamacare because of that vote. Um, 312, uh, this individual had 300 in one day and it was only one individual. Elections have consequences. Election fraud has consequences too. Um, so here's the thing that people are so frustrated about, whether we're talking about uh, what's going on in Pennsylvania or Wisconsin, um, Michigan, and Virginia, and of course, Minnesota the lack of any kind of offensive by federal officials here. So if you, you've sent the letter to Bill Barr, what do people need to do uh, to make that federal intervention happen before it's too late? Well, of course, we'd like them to go to omartruth.com and sign the petition there, which I think is important. That's a petition that we have to um, have, have uh, the uh, U.S. House of Representatives Act and the ethics investigation uh, but uh, you know, I would, I would, I would contact uh, anybody, anybody you can contact, your member of Congress, and encourage them to put pressure on, uh, you know, the uh, the federal um, people, um, Mr. Barr and, and the the, uh, the president and others to to do this. And I don't, I, the president has an instinct to do the right thing, and I think he's going to encourage that. As a matter of fact, he tweeted about this and suggested that the U.S. attorney here from Minnesota should be acting. And so we have contacted her as well, um, Erica McDonald. And so we're hopeful that she will get involved as well. But just encourage your elective officials to get others to do the right thing here. And uh, again, uh, the members of the Somali community uh, want this to be done. They want, uh, uh, they, they want some integrity to come back. Um, the third point, Michelle, do you want me to talk about that or no? Yes, um, please. Okay, um, by the way, on, on point number two, so the video from last night, 300 ballots that one guy has in his van, that by the way, um, when, he, when he turns them in, um, the Democrats in this state have huge receptacles. It looks almost like a big garbage can with a cover on it uh, outside of the polling place in the outdoors, outside of the polling place that people can come and put their absentee ballots into. Uh, I don't think he checked in. So that's what we have here. Uh, it's very easy for him from that point to put them in. Oh, by the way, uh, the the signature requirement for a witness uh, was tossed out in court too. So all they have to do is sign it themselves. And, and, and many Somali oh, people wow. who uh, don't speak or write English simply use an X. So ostensibly, many of those ballots, um, Liban, all he had to do was put an X on the back and dump it in the trash can. Not not the trash can, but the big uh, the big uh, receptacle for, yeah. for balance. Um, uh, so 4,500 people in that one very large development in Minnesota here, we have five, we have four counties that are 4,500 people or less. And so that's more people than four of our counties here in Minnesota. Uh, that's a lot of people. Um, so the third one was, was irregularities at the polling place. And I think some of those are gonna be covered and upcom and I can't and I haven't been part of the production, mm -hmm. so I don't know exactly what Veritas has done. Uh, but I mean, I heard stories about there being whiteout in the polling place and ballots being whited out. Um, Michelle, I don't think that uh, whiteout is on the list of office supplies for a polling place. So um, that and then uh, the other thing is is that. It's only, this is again, represented to me by, by people who are part of elections and some, some people with integrity who want um, their elections and their people to, um, 
be cleared of the corruption that's that's infiltrated uh, from some places. Um, so uh, they uh, have represented to me that that the inability to stop fraud in the in the polling place is largely a language barrier thing. A lot of it is language barrier thing, and people who can speak Somali in those. Uh, certainly know everything that's going on. If you're a poll worker there and you don't speak Somali, um, you're kind of uh, you're kind of left out of the loop. Sometimes you're caught sitting out. Sometimes you're kind of forced outside to sit up, or told to go sit on the bench outside because you don't know what's going on. And that's that's kind of the environment. And the campaigns are uh, are um, are uh, are really involved there. And uh, stories about campaign workers going into the polling booth with voters, um, which I had never heard of before. Um, and then even another story that was represented to me, I don't know if it's true, um, is that uh, Representative Omar paid her delegates for endorsing convention, her most loyal supporters, to apply to be election judges. Oh and I never heard of that before. But paying people to apply to be election judges um, was was mentioned to me as well. By the way, is before I forget another story. I mean, these again, I don't have I don't have anything to back these up. But another story that I heard was actually merchandising of ballots between campaigns. Hundred ballots. How much you give me for them? Oh that's, wow! That's wow. one thing I heard. Now again, I don't have anything to back that up. Bidding for ballots. Yeah. So those are the three. Got it. Got it. So, um, so we'll be expecting more videos from Project Veritas. And uh, just to, to bottom line this for people, we're looking at illegal ballot harvesting in uh, many other states. We're looking here at uh, this kind of cash for ballot harvesting fraud, as well as the in-person fraud Many of these stories that you've heard, some of them being vetted now by Project Veritas, others that are out there that have yet to be investigated by the Justice Department. Uh, I, I want to ask you one last question, and it's a why question. When people cast their ballots for President Trump in 2016, it's exactly the kind of bureaucratic inertia or worse, uh, collusion by deep state bureaucrats that they were voting against. How do you explain the Justice Department ignoring your complaints for more than a year now and still not even responding to you with regard to the, the latest iterations of, of uh, election fraud that's tied to Ilan Omar now? I can't explain it, Michelle. I, I don't know. Um... And I, and I don't know for sure that they have not been doing things, but I talk to people in the community and, um, um, you know, you hear once, in a, I, I heard one time where um, they were saying there's some, some, some guys are knocking on the doors over at building X. Um, and that was one instance. And so it wasn't, um, and so I don't know how, uh, you know, how undercover they can be, but um, I, I think in that community, they would, uh, they would identify them very quickly, right? Um, but, but I haven't I haven't heard any activity that suggests that they're actually doing stuff. But you know, they, they also tell you that uh, if we're doing stuff, you don't know it. I'm not an FBI guy, <laughs> but I but I think uh, I think I think uh, A. G. Barr uh, and I've heard that he is uh, is very interested in 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 finding out about this and I wanna invite him here and if I can meet with him. Yes, well, we'll put that APB out there. Uh, and I, I think it's for the rest of the internet army, the Twitter army to go to omartruth.com, sign the petition, their strength in numbers and do everything you can to crank up the heat on these federal officials. Tag AG Barr, retweet out this uh, live stream video uh, and make it known that you're dissatisfied with the uh, the lack of activity. And I understand too, Steve, what you're saying. Obviously they can't be broadcasting it out in the open, but the, mm -hmm. the community that you deal with is close knit enough that you would hear. Yeah, You'd definitely know. the case. Yeah, yeah. yeah and they're very, they're very close. Right, so once again, it's left to Project Veritas. They have a hashtag themselves. It's called Project Veritas Gets Results. 
<laughs> it's, and it's been left, and, right? And ballot harvesting. Yes, and hashtag, hashtag ballot, ballot harvesting, harvesting which uh, broke through, uh, what is it? How many million views? I heard views? four million this four morning. Million. Four million. It's just astonishing mm -hmm. because if you think about the level of shadow banning uh, and suppression of hashtags that is going on, I mean, and of course they did their own undercover investigation of all of these Silicon Valley groups that have explicitly said their number one goal is to stop President Trump from being reelected. Uh, mm -hmm. And yet they're able to surmount all that as well as the mainstream media block on, on, on their work. So again, people, you need to understand that Steve Dreskowski is the hero in all of this, listening to the people in the community, reporting it to the feds, and then going to Project Veritas when nobody else was doing anything about it. My goodness. All I can say is thank you, Steve. For thank you, Michelle. Thanks for all you do. Well, um, I appreciate you know, it. We have to we have to get uh, we have to get go around the mainstream media. You're doing a great job of that. Project Veritas is doing that. The people are talking. This is going to be in front of the minds of voters going into the polls in November. It's going to grow. This story is going to grow even bigger over the next few days as more stuff comes out. Uh, I'm very certain of that. I just don't have all the details to share with you here today. Well, it's a game changer, and uh, we'll be in touch with you again, and keep doing what you're doing. Take care, Steve. You too. You All too. Right. God bless. Bye-bye. You too.